Thank you, Hanif, for that kind introduction. Good morning, friends and family worldwide. I would like to add my own words of welcome to you from our sanctuary in beautiful Kingston, Jamaica. And a special thank you for joining us on this Youth Sunday celebration. Even though you're not physically here, we are connected by threads of consciousness that radiate from the source, which warms me knowing that you are actually here. Good morning. During this extended period at home, I've been catching up on my reading. <clears throat> and by catching up on my reading, I mean reading stories to Liam, a three-year-old son. One of the stories that we recently read was about the ant and the grasshopper. Do you all remember that one? It's been a while. I don't remember it either. Let me refresh your memory. The story starts with a grasshopper frolicking, hopping around in the field, having fun while an ant was working hard, putting provisions together for the winter. The grasshopper said to the, to the ant, Brother, come sing a dance with me now. Let's have some fun. There's an abundance of food all over the place. Why are you pack up, pack up, pack up? Now let's just have some fun, man. That replied, Boy, grasshopper, the winter coming in on. Last year it was bad. I need to start preparing, and I think you should too. With that, Grasshopper left and continued with, with his winter preparation. Winter came, and sure enough, the Grasshopper had no food and ended up knocking on the ant's door. Today, I'll be taking a look at this story in a non-traditional way. I'll be looking at it solely from the perspective of the ant, which leads me to the title of this talk, Lessons from the Ant. Here's a disclaimer. I'm not a scientist, a biologist, or any type of this. No form of research was done in the preparation of this talk from a scientific point of view. All comments based on ants are from my observations and numerous battles with them over the years, okay? All right. Now here we go. At a glance, ants protect their young. They will go to no ends to protect their, their young, even sacrificing themselves. If you disturb an ant nest, one well, of the first things you'll see when danger is imminent is that they'll move their eggs to safety. Number two, attacking one is attacking them all. Them friends are going to defend them. Number three, ants are busy bodies. They are always working, always on the move. They're ever busy. Whether it's modifications to their ant hill, exploring the neighborhood, moving that last piece of the cake, Anyway, they're always advancing. The thing is, all of these apparent random activities contribute towards a bigger picture. The bigger picture is the survival of a colony. Their numbers are in the thousands, but they are one. Each doing their part without hesitation, knowing that their contribution, no matter how small or insignificant it may seem, appears to go towards the greater good of the colony. The colony, that is their big picture. Proverbs 6, 6 to 11 reads, Go to the ant, you slugger. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler. Yet, it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. How long will you lie there, you slugger? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come at you like a thief, and scarcity like an armed man. One of my other reads while staying at home was a book of Proverbs. I'll tell you that story a little later in the talk. Like the ant in the story, packing a little away every day, doing his thing despite, what, despite the grasshopper having fun, ensuring he was good for his future. And secondly from Proverbs, when we learn that the ant works diligently without anyone having to be on his back to get his job done, knowing that his actions are directly related to his situation. Can we learn from ants? I think so. It starts with finding your big picture. When I say big picture, it could be passing an exam, learning to drive, 
learning to sing, becoming more outgoing, visiting new places, learning a new language. Cantonese is nearly good for us now. Meeting your neighbors, say, saving for a financial target, telling, telling that person that you find interesting, or even learning a musical instrument. Whatever it is, you will find it. Perform activities that chip away at attaining it every day. Guess what? That big picture is not fixed. It can change. And most times it does. Maybe several times in a week. Another thing is, you can have more than one. Have a gallery. Note though, that experiences gained working towards your first big picture always prepares you for the next big picture. And it's a ripple effect. I will now share how I found an excerpt from Proverbs that was read earlier. I had a mini retreat with two of my dear friends at the beginning of the year. We all agreed that we wanted to grow more spiritually this year. We thought that it would be a great idea if we tackled the Bible in order, in order to attain this big picture. We decided that Proverbs would be the first book to read. Look at it now. Reading Proverbs is a small piece of my spiritual growth, big picture. Just five minutes of reading a day. That's five minutes a day has now contributed to another big picture. This thought that I'm having with you. I will admit, in the beginning, there were times, many, 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 many times, I didn't want to read. You know, getting up tired, working late, you can give yourself all the excuses you want. I had to force myself. It was a chore. When I checked in with my friends, they were ahead of me. I felt like I let them down by not reaching as far as they did. We made a deal at the beginning of the year <clears throat> that we would do this together, and I was not doing my part. Does that sound like a hand? Nope. After that catch-up call, I got my wake-up call. I had given myself excuses for not reading. I had to get strict with myself and do my part. It was not just for my friends. It was for me. I set an alarm out of every morning to read. Eventually it became a habit instead of a chore. And I'm better for it today. Those guys in my colony unknowingly kept me on track. When I'm talking these days, I can spit some philosophical stuff. Success stories come after a reality check. There are times when we all feel like contribution or like our contribution is not enough. We get discouraged. We all take the picture of them off of the wall. Don't be discouraged. It's a part of the course. Everyone goes through ups and downs. We're on this fantastic roller coaster ride called life. And it has ups and downs, curves and bends. That's a part of the ride that the downs are the part of the ride that makes you stronger. That part of the ride builds character. That's the part of the ride that shows you what you're made of. The more I speak, looking at it now, this is the most important part of the ride. How we react when we are down, that is us. We learn ourselves when we, when we realize without the process, we would not be prepared for what is next. It's easy to get frustrated with the process, especially if you don't see immediate results. You know the best part of being down? The only other way to go is up. And we rise. We always win. Back to these ants. We look at a little mound or a hole in the ground, the entrance of an ant nest. It's not a true representation of all the hard work that is underneath the ground all the intricate tunnels and chambers, the paths to allow air in and water out are transparent. The secret exit door, if you're trying to catch them, you have to find that. It's a masterpiece. It didn't happen overnight. It took a lot of work to create, and it was done a little at a time, with baby steps by baby steps every day. I'm reminding you, as a child of God, you have all the potential in you. Because you don't see anything happening, it does not mean God is not working through you. Your moves are deliberate and guided by the light of God. 
Any contribution, no matter how small it may seem, moves you closer to your big picture. Honestly speaking, at the end of the day, it comes down to two choices. Move forward into growth or stay stagnant. Jeff Bezos, founder of Amazon, said, it takes 10 years to become an overnight success. Let that resonate with you. 10 years to become an overnight success. Here's another gem that we should all know. Change your thinking, change your life. Sounds familiar? Leave it in the comments who said this quote. Check your thinking, sorry, change your thinking, change your life. We'll work on a prize for the first three people who respond correctly. Hint, hint, we have made mango trees on the property. Like the ants that work together as one, my friends, who I call my accountability partners, the guys that keep me on track, you too will get help. You may be surprised who is in your colony and you didn't know. Better yet, they didn't even know. You'll know when they step in to help you start rising. They'll, they'll be the octane boost in your tank that fuels you to go through your process. This does not mean it's going to be someone sweet who's going to help you when you fall or hush you when you stumble, no. It could be the person that makes you stumble. The person that gives you that big no. It could be the person that tells you you can't do it. Those persons are great motivators. No matter how it comes, there are no coincidences. We're always in the right place at the right time, with God's light illuminating our way. We may find ourselves doing what we may consider menial tasks. Don't take these menial tasks for granted. Do them to the best of your abilities, because you never know when you're going to need them they almost always lead to the next big thing that is waiting on you. I'll give you an example. Tom Brady, for all those NFL fans. He's an American football player who has been to nine Super Bowls and won six. The most of any NFL player in history. He wasn't the first choice player in the draft. He was selected number 199 and found a home on the bench for the first part of his career. He asked to play, and the coaches and management were skeptical. They told him they didn't, he didn't have the body type that he needed, and he had to work on that. And also, he had problems with his technique. As a bench warmer, he continued to practice and get better and better. Then one day, friends, that one day when it comes, you have to be ready. He was ready. I don't recall why right now, but when Brady went into that match, his team was down. At the end of the game, he fought his team to victory. The following game, he was a starting quarterback, and the rest is history. Being faithful to the small tasks prepare you for the big test. <clears throat> Doing the little things diligently and in faith will get you ready for when the big things come up. Conscious, consistent effort. When you're putting the pieces together, you may not see the big picture. But bit by bit, as we build, our skills grow. And before we know it, we're a better version of ourselves. I have wanted to learn the guitar for a very long time. And I shared this with Uncle Stevie Golding. Y'all know Uncle Stevie, so this is going to be hilarious. So I said, Uncle Stevie, I want to learn the guitar, you know. He said to me, where is the guitar? I said, I don't have one. Uncle Stevie said, Brethren, you're not serious. He was right. I was not serious. The next time he returned to Jamaica, I said, Uncle Stevie, I have a guitar. He said, no, you're serious. What can you play? Well, I was going to you to teach me a few things. And I was a little timid. Uncle Stevie, I said, Brethren, you're not serious. Anyhow, I can be a persistent fellow. I told him I love the chant. Don't let anyone ever tell you. I asked him if he could teach it to me. He taught me a few chords. Then he wrote some letters and numbers down on a piece of paper. I say letters and numbers because up to now I don't even know what he wrote on that paper. But I went to Google 
did a little searching, I managed to figure it out. But putting it together, there's also a melody. I didn't learn anything like that. You just gave me the building blocks of what I needed, which were chords and numbers and letters apparently. Well, five minutes a day for a while led to what I'm going to share with you now. Um, also, I think this child now, we can all especially relate to it in the climate that we're passing through. Let me check this thing out. Is coming together. Honey, I'm going to ask you to help me with this, please. 